All right, we've been talking about fundamental theorem of algebra and uh, this whole thing of if there's n solutions or there's nth degree, there's n solutions, sometimes they repeat and that's called multiplicity. So we're gonna look at when they do repeat and even if they don't, what's the graph look like around those zeros? So here you see in the picture, some chick doing some yoga and you can see that she's balanced on her bottom and uh, her bottom is, is tangent to the rock. Uh, that's significant. That's significant. Okay, uh, some sort of yoga pose. I don't know what it is. Could you do that? Probably not. Um, so on exercise five, I'm actually going to do this on Sketchpad. Let's do this as a demo. It'll be very clear. We've already gotten hints from it but by looking at those graphs from the first subjective. All right, so on this little Sketchpad demo, this was pretty sweet. If you have an iPad, you can open this up from my website and you can play around with it and uh, have fun while you're learning. So what I have in this sketch is I have uh, a polynomial function that's in factored form, as you can see. I have an A value, which I can change. Okay. Um, I also have uh, two zeros there. I have X minus P, and I can change that P value. Where are we at? change the p-value so it changes that x-intercept okay and uh, the q-value I can change that one wherever I want it to be ooh, negative, ooh, there we go and now each one of them is raised to a particular power now I set this up so that they would only stay integer powers whole numbers actually so that it stays a polynomial okay so what I want you to notice is right now n is at 1 and it just crosses straight through m is at 2, it's an even number, and it's tangent there. Let me actually make this one a multiplicity of 1. So both of them have a multiplicity of 1, and you can see 1 plus 1, it's a second degree, it's quadratic, it passes through each of those intercepts, and I can move each of those intercepts around. There we go, there we go. All right, so now let me increase 1 and make it make m equal to 2, so it's got an even multiplicity, and notice that it's tangent right there at that green one. Let me move that green one around. No matter where I move it, since its multiplicity is 2, it always stays tangent right there. That's pretty sweet. Let me make this thing a value negative. And even when I make it negative, same thing is true. Wherever I move it, it stays tangent right there. Okay. Um, let me make n negative, so they're both negative are even. So here I have fourth degree because 2 plus 2 gives me 4. And now they're both even and they both bounce off of the x-axis. They're both tangent right there. So wherever I move these things, and even if I make my a value negative, both tangent, whenever the multiplicity is a, a 2, even number. Let's make n equal to 3. So when n equals 3, it's an odd number and it crosses through again. M is still even, so it bounces right off. Let's make M odd. Maybe I can make it another 3. Look, it crosses through on both of them. That's pretty sweet. Alright, Ram. Okay, let's try. Let's try maybe one more. Let's make M an even number. Notice that whenever I made it an even number, now it bounced off. But the one that's at M, the green one, is still crossing through. It jags a little bit whenever it's the third degree. There's Rowan, if you can hear him screaming for mommy again. All right, so do you think that you have a pretty good grasp of this? Whenever it is even multiplicity, whenever it is an even multiplicity, it's going to be tangent to the x-axis. It's not going to cross through. Tangent means it touches at one point and then bounces back off. Okay, whenever it's an odd multiplicity, it's going to cross right through. And the lower the power, the straighter it's going to cross through. Higher the power, it's going to jag a little bit before it crosses through. Okay, so that summarizes the whole thing. Let's take a look at exercise with some equations and try to figure this stuff out. Okay, so let's let's uh, now answer these questions except for not do it with the uh, graphing calculator because probably we can do this without it now. So on number one, first of all, what is the degree? So here I have an exponent of 2. This one would be an exponent of 1. Just add those things up because I'm going to multiply it, add the exponents. Our degree, n is equal to 3. 
So this means I have to have three zeros. Are they all x-intercepts? Hmm, maybe not. Sometimes they repeat. So the first one is at x equals negative 5. And since its multiplicity is 1, it's going to cross. It's going to cross the x-axis at that point. Okay. The next one is x equals 1. And since its multiplicity is 2, it's an even number, it's going to be tangent. Ta huh? Tangent. I don't know what's going on there. Tangent. Which means that it's just going to, it's almost like a little parabola right there. Like a second degree polynomial. It's going to bounce right back off. Okay. So on number 2, add up the two exponents. i got a 4. I've got a 3. Add those up. The degree is 7, so n equals 7, disco dancer. On the first one, odd multiplicity. What's it going to do? It's going to cross the x-axis right there, and it might jag just a little bit. Right? It's going to maybe flatten out a little bit, kind of like a cubic. Okay, and then on the x equals 1 from the next parentheses, it's to the fourth power, which is even, which means it's going to be tangent. And it's going to flatten out a little bit since it's higher than a power of 2. Last one. The first one is right. Oh, wait. What's the degree? 5 plus 6 n equals 11. So they, they, all of these things have the exact same zeros, but the graph looks a little bit different. Um, so this first one, x equals negative 5. Since it's odd multiplicity, it's going to cross. And yeah, it's going to jag a little bit. It's going to flatten out right there. And then um, x equals 1. It has a multiplicity of 6. It occurs 6 times, which is an even number, so it's going to be tangent. It doesn't. Oh, no. Are you kidding me? Keep. What happened? I don't know. Um, technical difficulties. Anyway, at x equals 1, multiplicity is 6. It's an even number, so that means it's going to be tangent right there tangent and uh, it's going to flatten out a little bit because its degree is higher than 2. So here it is all summarized for us. First of all, zeros are only x-intercepts if they are real numbers. Imaginary ones are not going to touch the x-axis. There's the first thing. Second thing, if it has an odd multiplicity, so in other words the factor, whatever it is, is raised to the first power the third power, the fifth power, whatever, it's going to cross the x-axis at that point. The higher the power, the more it's going to kind of flatten out a little bit whenever it crosses. So that first one at x, um, x equals negative 1, it's an odd multiplicity. So for example, this might be x plus 3, x plus 1 to the third power. Okay. The last one in even multiplicity means that it's going to be tangent to the x-axis. It's going to just bounce right off. So that's the one, the zero, that is at x equals 2. So for example, that could be x minus 2 to the second power, even multiplicity. All right, so let's look back at a previous slide. It's the one with the fundamental theorem all summarized here. And we know that we have six zeros. It was a degree of 6. This first one, it has an even multiplicity, x equals 0. So this means right here it's going to be tangent. Okay? At x equals 3, it has an odd multiplicity, so it's going to cross the x-axis at that point. And then the last one, x equals negative 5, also an odd multiplicity, and it's going to cross... Really? There we go. Uh, it's going to cross and then maybe jag a little bit whenever it crosses the x-axis. So there it is. There's all of the second objective. Not too terrible. All this information is going to be very helpful when we go to graph the things in the next lesson. Not the next objective, but the whole next lesson. Okay, see you in the next objective.